here in Southern California. Mostly clear skies, widespread temperatures into the mid 70s, lots of sunshine, and humidity levels that have returned from the depths of graveyard like non-existence to a much improved level that can at least prevent what seems like spontaneous combustion <laughs> from the air into fire and all over California in the last few weeks, which is uh, much better than it has been tired of dealing with these power outages and using generators and the whole nine so today november 2nd, 2019 i want to drop some evidence of volcanic unrest between the garlock fault and san andreas fault zones and as i was preparing for this the geysers in california has broken out into some earthquake swarms magnitude 4.1 just within the last day Magnitude 3.7 yesterday, magnitude 3.1 on October 28th, and a magnitude 2.9 also yesterday. And there was a lot more uh, low to mid two range quakes and a lot of ones. So definitely an outbreak at the geysers, uh, which is the largest geothermal fields in the world, as far as I know. So that has been going on. And I want you to look over here. This line roughly represents, actually pretty accurately represents the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. And this line here represents the Garlock Fault. And of course here in Ridgecrest, Cyril's Valley, Kozo Volcanic Field. This whole area has been getting pummeled by thousands of earthquakes since July. And really since prior to that. But the, mad, the major stuff, the 6.4, July 4th, the 6. Point, I'm sorry, the 7.1, July 5th, and the thousands of earthquakes since in this area near the eastern shear zone of California, or the far southern end of the Walker Lane, a series of junction of earthquake faults. I want to point out what's going on at Soledad Mountain in Mojave, California. This triangular area, just a tad bit north of Los Angeles, California. Actually, part of this is north is uh, Los Angeles County, represented by this green line here, and then this green line here, uh, where Soledad Mountain is, is Kern County. So you'll see the county line just as you pass Lancaster get into Rosamond, and then there's Soledad Mountain. And, of course, if you are familiar with Soledad Mountain, it's a mining area, kind of like the geysers, where, you know, you're, you're tapping into earth to get heat to power electricity. Soledad Mountain is an extinct volcano, and there are a lot of extinct volcanoes in this area. You'll see this whole, this is the Mojave Desert, a lot of buttes and extinct volcanoes. And, you know, you zoom in, you can see these are, these are ancient extinct volcanoes, primarily from the Miocene era, which is 21, roughly about 20 to 21, 22 million years ago. And getting closer to the Garlock and the San Andreas, there is Soledad Mountain. And you'll see here there's a volcano in Ninac. And part of this volcano was ripped in half as one half of this volcano in Ninac was dragged all the way up here to Pinnacles, okay, right along the San Andreas Fault. This red line continues up this, this crack right here. I had this highlighted just so I could focus on the Soledad Mountain region. But Half of this Nenak volcano over the course of about 21 million years or so has been dragged up to Pinnacles National Park. The other half has remained. And why has that happened? Because of tectonic plate movement. 
uh, this you've got the Pacific plate has been moving up the North American plate on the other side of the San Andreas has been moving down and what of course happened in Ridgecrest in July you had the compression here as the Garlock fault has been pretty much completely locked and so as this area was wedging up against basically the Garlock fault without movement this softer volcanic field ancient volcanic fields and roughly 20 or more faults that go right into this eastern shear zone here coming out of, Wal of uh, Walker Lane Fault Zone which borders California and Nevada up here this whole region here is Walker Lane what happened is that caused the uh, major earthquakes in Ridgecrest and so in any case that's why you've got half of a volcano here in Ninoc and the other half in Pinnacles so you could definitely track the plate movement and the tectonic forces of course 20 million 21 22 million years ago or even 17 18 19 million years ago all these buttes and this whole ancient volcanic field this was alive this was popping with pyroclastic blasts what are they doing right now at Soldad Mountain well they're it's being used as a extraction point for uh, mining for silver and gold and so I want you to check out this video because I was spied on it and I caught some activity so check it out and so what we're looking at here is uh, we're passing an extinct Soldad Mountain volcano hasn't erupted in at least 17 and a half million years uh, possibly 20 21 million years and the day prior on October 21st there was a 1.3 magnitude quarry blast that was the official designation from the USGS and on that day I saw none of this cloud here even with the quarry blast going on so the very next day I see these uh, gaseous looking clouds and I couldn't help myself but to break out a camera and record I've since visited this mountain many times can't catch them at all and uh, I've seen the mining and it doesn't produce that much dust from what I can tell so that's what I saw I thought it would be worthy of looking at it and maybe somebody who knows a lot can chime in and so why does this all matter and why am I bringing up anything pertaining to the Garlock fault and why discuss extinct volcanic fields from millions of years ago and I you know really I think it's just fascinating that I was able to witness some possible activity from an extinct volcanic field in California I don't think any of us have been alive to see a volcanic eruption in California and I'm not saying I we saw a volcanic eruption that involves magma obviously not but we did see some activity based on hydrothermal and steam and so there's evidence that there's still some life in there which is why mining would be occurring there anyway you know so you'd be grabbing old volcanic residues silver and gold and quartz and uh, all the various minerals but hey if you can get some more minerals to, to pop up to, to extract then why not but just this week alone there's an earthquake swarm that's evident at the Clear Lake volcanic field and the USGS has listed that the Clear Lake volcanic field as a quote high risk volcano which means it is possible that at any given time it can erupt in California Two, Long Valley Caldera, many folks have read over the course of the last few months, particularly since the Ridgecrest events, uh, have read about 250 million cubic, I'm sorry, 250 cubic miles of magma sitting underneath Long Valley, underneath this area, which is a super volcano if it were to erupt to its maximum potential. Uh, and that's adjacent to Mammoth Mountain, which is over here. This has been widely publicized, that information, although the news was really released uh, last year. It just didn't spread like wildfire in terms of, in terms of uh, how the information got out and who was interested in reading the reports. Not too much interest in 2018, but after Ridgecrest this year in July with the epic back-to-back -back earthquake uh, event 6.4 and 7.1 and then of course the seemingly never-ending 
amount of aftershocks. Uh, everybody was spreading that information all online uh, through all the social media sites, and it was pretty big. And so with Long Valley and Mammoth Mountain swarming, you got to pay attention to that. And Long Valley Caldera has been listed as a, quote, very high risk volcano. So that's something to pay attention to as well. And the Kozo Volcanic Field, which is just basically in the Ridgecrest area, same area of faults. You got faults in the volcan uh, Kozo Volcanic Field going down to Ridgecrest, which is somewhere over here, somewhere nearby. There we go, Ridgecrest and Kozo. This whole area with Sears Valley and Kozo Volcanic Field and Ridgecrest, we've got roughly around 20 faults in that eastern shear zone area going through these volcanic fields. And it's been intensely active. And this area has been risk, uh, uh, considered a risk zone by the USGS as well. And you've also got the Salton Buttes down at the Salton Sea, which is the southern end of the San Andreas. You got this area, which is known as the only generally active area at any given time uh, when the San Andreas is having its earthquake swarms. And so earthquake swarms have been ongoing in this area. You can look at any earthquake map and you'll see nothing but thousands of earthquakes adjacent to the southern end of the San Andreas that have been going on all year, all last year. And the key is when you see these swarms increase in one section and then you see new sections of swarms pop up and then new sections of swarms, it, it should be alarming. And so how can we tell if a volcano will erupt? Well, according to the USGS, as listed at usgs.gov, there are five key factors to look for, including A, an increase of the frequency and intensity of earthquakes, B, noticeable steaming or fumarolic activity, and new or enlarged areas of hot ground. C, subtle swelling of the ground surface. D, small changes in heat flow. And E, changes in the composition or relative abundances of fumarolic gases. And I added those letters because I'm reading verbatim on what they listed at the USGS. So if you see this map right here and you see these are all the earthquakes that have happened from July 1st through today, November 4th. Uh, these are all the earthquakes that have happened in this area on this map of magnitude 2.5 and above. And when you zoom in and look a little bit closer, you'll see there's a connection between volcanic hotspots up here, up north, you know, the geysers area. You'll see there's earthquakes. You'll see over in the Long Valley Caldera area with Mammoth, you'll see there's a lot of earthquakes there. Come down to the bottom end of the, the southern end of the San Andreas in the Salton Sea, you'll see, of course, there's a huge earthquake swarm there as well nearby. And then remember earlier I had mentioned the Miocene era Ninak volcano that was split in half and brought up here to Pinnacles. And the other half of the earth, uh, I'm sorry, the other half of the volcano sits in Pinnacles National Park, and that's right up in here where there's an earthquake swarm as well going on. So there has been an increase in the frequency and intensity of earthquakes. There has been noticeable steaming and activity. There has there have been hot spots. I'm sure if you're on Facebook and social media, you'll see that people have been passing links le left and right about hot spots and various fires that may have been sparked by some hot spot activity. And so, you know, there's some of these factors have been at play. So there is going to be some situations that we should all be paying attention to. Uh, what we haven't seen is all of these factors combine into one and having an actual eruption. But living in California with the Garlock, the San Andreas, the volcanoes, the big earthquakes we've had this year, the earthquakes at volcanic zones, the hotspots the evidence of the eastern shear zone and 
the Walker Lane fault system that's that I'm clicking I'm pointing to right here the evidence that they may be forming a new plate boundary along with the Garlock fault all this evidence and this this information that's been coming out over the last year or two three um, I, I would suggest that you know the next 20 years of California's activity are going to be a lot more prevalent than the prior 20 years or so where we haven't had many major earthquakes in, in California. So let's look forward to the next few years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years. Let's expect much bigger activity over this next run. And uh, with that, I believe that's what I've got for today. Keep your eyes out and uh, don't actually don't discount this extinct volcanic zones in California either. They may be a little active as well and we just may not know it. So with that said, I'll go ahead and sign off and wish you a great rest of your day. And it is Monday, November 4th at 1130 a.m. Pacific time. Peace out.